Hey, what's up everybody? Esam here bringing you another video. This one going to be something I was thinking about last night as I was trying to go to sleep. So obviously, new Smash Switch, right? I already had like my slight like 30 second kind of video yesterday of like, oh my god, it's happening, right? And that's, that's cool. Uh, but I was thinking about it and, you know, I still don't know if it's going to be a port or a new game based off of certain physics engines, which again, th there's like no information. It's kind of hard to tell people are theorizing like, oh, well, they didn't have Bandai Namco in the uh, trailer thing at the end. It only had HAL Laboratories, so obviously it's going to be a new game. I don't know if that's true. They might have just not put them. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Still speculation. But for Smash Switch, I wanted to talk about a few things that I did and did not want that have been in the previous iterations that I feel like is very, very important. And not like the obvious ones, like no tripping. Like that's that's obvious, right? But I wanna talk about some things that I have, like I have experience in Melee, Brawl, and Smash 4, and PM, and I just wanted to talk about the things that I like and dislike from both of them that I would definitely like in uh, this new Smash Switch game. So first off, I really don't want directional air dodges. I think wave dashing is cool, but I definitely do like more committal jumps and uh, things like that. And that will relate into my point number two. Uh, like, I think air directional air dodges are, like, good, but I definitely do like more so, like, being able to frame trap people, like, for air dodging, or that it's not like, you know, you can't really have ledge dashes. I know that you can have different platform pressure when you have uh, air dodges, or directional air dodges, because you can, like, wave land on a platform, or you can wave land, like, when you're landing, and so your landing can be a little bit less committal, but I definitely do like the ability for this game to have more defined neutral advantage and disadvantage, and wave dashing, or, like, you know, being able to wave land or just like landing on platforms with directional air dodges kind of muddies that water because it's not like they're landing, they have to do only one of these two options because now an entirely new movement option is available, which isn't to the rest of the cast. Like I like there being a definitive like, oh, you have bouncing fish, you have quick attack, you have monkey flip, you have a move like that or like afterburner kick for bail. Like you have moves like that that make your disadvantage better as opposed to everyone can have a movement thing. So you're gonna have to make an even harder read to like keep people in disadvantage, assuming that like the combos aren't crazy because uh, I'm assuming the speed is going to be somewhat like Smash 4 if it's a new game uh, because this is all kind of assuming it's a new game because if it's a port it's going to be like the same as Smash 4 like plus or minus a few characters and like maybe patches and stuff um, two I don't want dash dancing to be a thing dash dancing is actually probably my second or least favorite thing in melee because I really don't like non-committal movement I think when you see someone dash the fact that you know you can hit them and that they can't shield and that they can't dash backwards is like really really nice because it you're able to like react to more things instead of just having constant guessing games of oh, are they gonna move backwards like you know I played Samus in melee who did not who does not have a good dash dance uh, and I think that really hurts her because you are on, like in order to feel like I can hit someone assuming that they're you know being patient I have to like commit all the way back to like ow that really hurt there's a lamp up there um like all the way to the back of their dash dance in order to try to get a hit and typically they're pretty fast characters because characters with good dash dances are mostly mobile because they have long initial dashes and they have fast initial dashes which is why it's good because uh, technically everyone has dash dance but like the characters that are faster and have like long initial dashes you're able to just do this forever and it's non-committal and it's actually really really boring to me uh like the spacing games are like cool i guess but i'd rather just like have micro spacing more like with perfect pivots where it's a little bit easier to see like oh this little tiny movement was able to cause this whole opening because you didn't you know like that's what leo does right like mk leo he definitely mixes very very well between uh dashing forward and doing like a dancing blade or like a forward air and then okay well i'm gonna try to hit that forward air first so i'm gonna hit i'm gonna try to move forward first and then he perfect pivots and then hits you for trying to approach him like i think that's good i really don't like the dash dancing variant uh, I just, I, I'm not a huge fan. Three, please keep Smash 4 ledges. I really like ledge trumping. I really like people being able to grab the ledge, like multiple people trying to grab the ledge. I do not like ledge hogging because I feel like ledge hogging closes off so, so many characters that can, that would like to go off stage. You know, pretty much almost every character that exists in the Smash 4 meta right now would be like way, way worse if you had, you know, melee type ledges, except for like Bayonetta and Pikachu. Every other character has a bad recovery if you couldn't just grab the ledge for free. Even Sheik would be bad because she would have to vanish on stage all the time and then you would just punish her and like it would just it just I'm not a huge fan. I'd rather people be able to go off stage, try and edge guard if they get it cool, if they don't, okay, well they make it back. Like if anything, I really would like people's like ledge snaps to be a little bit smaller because that's honestly the thing of like, wow, how'd you make that back? That was crazy. You were like falling and you were so far and you still grabbed it. 
I like the inclusion of two frames to kind of balance this because it's like, oh, you're going to grab the ledge, I can hit you regardless, assuming you don't get that like that perfect angle from above the, the stage and things like that. Uh, you know, maybe like an interesting middle ground is like, okay, well, you have less invulnerability on the ledge, so you don't have as much time to think on the ledge, but you have the ability that like you can ledge hog with your invincibility, but if you lose your invincibility, you're not able to, obviously you can just get hit off the ledge, right? But like, if someone's going high, then you can't like, you know, just stay on the ledge and uh, be like, oh, well, haha, you're screwed. Like you lose your invulnerability and you're going to be able to get let Trump. Maybe something like that. I don't really know exactly how that would work. I'm just kind of theorizing. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of ledge hogging. I really, really do think that um, the Smash 4 ledges are like perfect. They're so much better because in Brawl, the ledge was broken. You had so many characters that could just abuse being on the ledge and you not being able to punish it to the point where we needed a ledge grab limit, right? Like for like multiple characters, obviously Meta Knight was the biggest offender with planking, but you had like DK, you had Pit, you had Game & Watch, you had Pikachu, like you had Zero Suit. There were a lot of characters that were really, really, less so Zero Suit, but there were a lot of characters that were like really, really strong at the ledge that it was like obnoxious and it made it really boring to have someone on the ledge. And in Melee, it's difficult, but ledge dashing as like a lot of meta characters is like defining. It's like, oh, I'm scared. Time to go to the ledge and ledge dash and now I have center stage or like at least a third of your stage because you have to respect the fact that I have invincibility. Whereas Smash 4, the minute you get off the ledge, you don't have invincibility. I think the not carrying over of invincibility on the ledge is like so smart. That was one of the best things. Maybe Edgehog can be a thing, but at least... At the very least, you need to not carry over invincibility when you drop off the ledge or do any ledge option. Like, that's, it's awful. It's so bad. And it's like, but yeah, how are you supposed to get back on the ledge? Again, as I mentioned, I really like the classification. The easier, able to tell, advantage, disadvantage, and neutral. Uh, I really don't like people being, like, one of the biggest things that I could stop playing melee was, like, you know, it was dash dancing, as I mentioned, and ledge dashing. It was, like, really... I get someone on the ledge, which is supposed to be the worst position, but I couldn't edge guard them because I wasn't fast enough because I'm Samus, and now they have advantage? What? That's dumb. I, I hate that. I, I think it's so stupid. It's difficult, but it's stupid. Like, I don't like that at all. Four, please, God, no rage. Rage is so, like, again, I like the concept of rage. The concept of rage was, hey, heavy characters are always bad. Let's make heavy characters better by letting them, since they're gonna live longer, they can be stronger for longer because they're typically gonna die at, like, 150 as opposed to, like, 100, like light characters are, because light, fast characters are always the best characters in every Smash game. You have Pikachu and Kirby, who are the two best characters, who are the light, fast characters. Then you, or I guess, you know, Kirby's not super fast, but you get what I'm saying. Then you have Fox and Falco, who are like the comboable, really fast, really mobile. Marth is there too. Like, you have the really fast characters. Then in Brawl, you had Meta Knight, you had Day to Day, you had Ice Climbers, you had Olimar, which were all fairly light, fairly mobile characters, although Ice Climbers are a little bit different. And then in this game, you know, the top tiers are the fastest, most mobile characters. You have Cloud, you have Bayo, you have Pika. You, I mean, obviously, I'm biased, right? You have Fox. You have characters that are just so speedy, and big characters have always been bad. You had Snake, who was okay in Brawl, uh, and then Day to Day, who was, like, the last relevant character. Then, like, in 64, characters just die in one hit, so it doesn't really count. But in Melee, the best heavy character is, like, Ganon, who's, like, not viable in tournaments for the most part. And then in Smash 4, you know, assuming you didn't have Rage, like, characters, like, D DK and Bowser would be, like, awful. So I understand why they did Rage, but if they're going to have it, they need to do it better. The fact that Rage constantly scales, like, the fact that I think it's, like, 33 or 35% where Rage starts and it changes throughout all percents is obnoxious because you never 100% know when your combos are going to work because the difference in Rage between 37 and 50% is, like, significant and 50 to 67, especially with, like, high knockback or high base knockback, like, throws, like, at low percents, like, it changes so, so much. So if Rage is in the game, which I just hope it's not, because I'd rather be able to test things and know when everything works and know all my kill percents, like, consistently. Like, that'd be fantastic. That's standard. Um, if they do have rage, I'd rather it be, like, st specific points. So it's like, okay, you have zero rage. You have stage one rage at 50, stage two rage at 100, and stage three rage at 150. Because, again, I do understand the concept of rage. They're trying to balance the big, heavy characters that always suck. And they're trying to, like, make it more, like, different. But in Tekken, like, Bando, Ban, Bandai Namco, sorry, has, they have, like, no rage and rage. And, like, that's it. So I'd like that. You know, zero rage and then 100% rage. Like, sure. Like, you're done. So that way you can have two things that you test instead of, like, constantly scaling rage that you hope works. And you hope that your percents that you have for your kill combo still works. Because, oops, if you didn't, now you have to find a new way to kill. 
and that's a really big deal. Um, and five, number five, I think this is number five. I might be, I don't remember. I'm not paying attention because I'm rambling. Uh, please keep the grab system the way it is in Smash 4. Chain grabs are dumb. I hate chain grabs. I played Pikachu and Ice Climbers in Brawl, which were the two most chain grabby characters, or two of the three most chain grabby characters in the game. Do not include them. Chain grabs just make it feel so skewed for risk reward of getting a grab because you can have long combos, but you can't SDI a chain grab. You can't do anything. You just get grabbed and you go, okay, well, I hope they mess up. And then if they don't, it's just like, okay, cool, I took 60. I really, really don't like that type of play. It's just, it feels so unrewarding, you know. I just, every game that I play that has chain grabs, I'm just like, Ugh, why is this in the game? And like, I use it because it's good, right? But I think it's very, very dumb. I'd rather you have like throw to move to move. And like, you can have a zero to death from like long combos, sure. But I don't like chain grabs. And I really, really like, you know, in order to obviously keep chain grabs not a thing, the one second little like timer. Excuse me, there's no editing, by the way, because I'm, like, doing this on my phone, and I'm kind of just uploading it because I'm just kind of rambling. Um, the one-second timer for grabs is so, so smart, because you can have throw loops. Like, you know, I have down throw, up air, forward air, grab, and Mario has, like, down tilt, or down throw, up, up tilt, up tilt, grab on, like, fast fallers. Like, I like that because you have to, like, branch out your combos. It's kind of just like in Skullgirls, where you can't do the same combo in the same loop over and over and over again. You have to kind of think of ways to change the moves you're doing so your combo doesn't break. I really, really like that concept in Smash 4. Uh, so please, and also in doubles it really is nice because you can't have just grab release infinites which were really really big in brawl. Uh, I don't really know why melee players don't do it that much. I, I don't know. I don't I don't understand why. Like people, you just saw the plup Mewtwo King combo at uh, Genesis. They literally could have just been like grab release, pummel, 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 cool you got release, grab, pummel, 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 like that and you're done. Like it's boring but you're that's that's all you have to do. And so in doubles, it's really nice the fact that you have to do something like, yeah, sure, footstools and jab blocks and things like that. Also, side note, jab blocks in Smash 4 are amazing. The fact that you can get them, but they're not, like, broken and you can't just do it across the entire stage and into a kill move is really nice. So I think they should also keep the three jab limit or, like, maybe, like, five, three, like, some some low number. Not, like, infinite, assuming you don't SDI off stage. Um, but that's a little quick aside. But, yeah, I think the grab, like, so... As a recap, because I wanted to go over everything again, uh, Rage, bad. Chain grabs, bad. So the grab mechanics in Smash 4 are really good. Smash 4 ledges, good. Dash dancing, bad. Directional air dodges, I just prefer normal jumps and things like that. Like, it's, it's not really, like, a bad thing. Like, it, it definitely would still be good, but it's definitely not my preference. And, yeah, that is going to be about it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed. Also, I want to talk about characters, but I didn't want to, like, fill up this video, and I'm probably, I might make one, like, later when I'm home again. Uh, but let me know down in the comments down below what characters you want in this game. You know, what characters you don't want, although I'll probably everyone's just going to be like, Bayonetta, not in this game. Uh, but I just want to know what characters you guys want, because I definitely, my number, my top three for that, just like as a quick note, are, like, Ridley, um, Isaac from Golden Sun and Gino. I would love those. That would be amazing. And so let me know down in the comments down below who you guys want in the new Smash game. If it is a new Smash game or it's a port, you know, you can still add characters in a port. So it's fine either way, in my opinion. Like they're adding inklings. So I just, which is hype, by the way. I love that. Like dedicated zoners, please. Maybe the, you know, as, well, we'll see. I might come up with a few more things that I definitely like another list of like what I do and do not want in this game. I think that'd be pretty interesting because there are a lot of mechanics that have existed in throughout the games and I kind of want to talk about like why I do and do not like some of the mechanics. So let me know down below actually as well if you like this type of video where I can just kind of go over mechanics and things like that. And yeah, social media, Panda and Partner stuff is down below and I will see you all next time. Ooh, boo, bye.